20 underrated items in Classic WoW. Hey guys, MC Wheel here with a new video, and today I want to talk with you guys about some underrated items in Classic WoW. Now when I mean underrated, I'm talking about items that aren't that well known and where people often don't realize just how useful they can be in certain situations. Okay. Things like the Skull of Impending Doom and Tidal Charm are items that I've seen in PvP and have been brought up so many times that those will not be talked about. I thought Tidal Charm was no, a 5 No, with the help cooldown. of the viewers, I found items that are fairly unknown. So you know this is this is some kind of bullshit. Look at that. The full fucking, what is that, Avengers gear? With what I'm, I'm pretty sure this sword is the sword that you're able to get from the Moral Atom quest in Duskwood. Or are well known, what but a not terrible a whole lot character. of people see the potential of said item. So, without further ado, let's start off this list with the Mark of the Dragon Lord, recommended by Bob Plays. This drops from Overward Wormthalak in Lower Blackrock Spire. games. An item most people never paid this any is actually real really attention good. to, and an item that is going to wow a lot of people. So what this ring does is give you a shield that absorbs 500 damage. But, okay. while that shield is active, you gain 22 mana every 5 yeah, this seconds. Is fucking and ridiculous. here's the kicker, for 30 minutes. It's insane. That's right. If you manage to take less than 500 damage in those 30 minutes, you will have that extra MP5 That's bonus fucking for massive, its entire dude. duration. And 22 MP5 in vanilla is huge. That's the equivalent of two mind tap talismans. A very popular combo for, let's say, 11, 11. True. Resto shamans. The only problem with this item is that it drops off of Overlord Wyrm to Luck. It's a 1% chance. Rock Spire, which isn't as popular a dungeon as, let's say, Upper Black Rock yeah, Spire. Yeah, because nobody wants to fucking And on top do of it. that, it has a very low drop chance. But, should you be a healer or a class that relies right. heavily on MP5 and should this item drop, you better try it's really and get it really good. Because the like, shield if somebody has this, it's powerful. really, really good. Next item I want to talk about is the Ravager that drops off of Herod in Scarlet Monastery Armory. Oh boy! Now, the Here Ravager on paper doesn't seem like that great. This of is the good part. It has no stats, and the prop makes you okay. break Storm while standing still in one place. Yep. So, if you want to move, you have to manually cancel the effect. God, I fucking love this ability. However, some people have found some very unique purposes for this item, including Razia, who has shown that with the right playstyle, you can actually become a pretty decent AoE hunter with that axe. Yeah, being able to farm mobs from lower level dungeons, and on top of that, every hit that the Ravager does has a chance to proc Wind Fury. So there is a way where you could be mowing down packs of mobs as a Shaman while getting Wind Fury procs for days. What That's the why I consider fuck? this item to be very underrated. Oh my Up god! Next is the Silent Fang, recommended by Bob. I, uh, dude, Ravager, in my opinion, I think Ravager is going to be one of the best weapons that you can use for, like, AoE farming as a warrior. So, like, let's say you want to run your friends through dead mines, Bro, you just put on Ravager, and you do it. It's not even a big deal. And it's probably one of the coolest weapons in the entire game. Like, whoever thought of doing Ravager, like, that person needs to make more items in the current fucking game. I love that item. It is one of the coolest items in the fucking game plays games. A blue sword that drops off of Dark Master Gandling in Skullamance with a 1.6 attack speed. On paper, not but the greatest, no. but that chance on hit. It's not. Oh boy. A silence that lasts a whopping 6 seconds can make or break a fight if you're, let's say, a warrior or a rogue trying to bring down a caster. You'll still have to be lucky as it's only a chance on hit and not a... Just imagine having two of those. Nobody's doing shit. <laughs> use that's so but broken. at the right moment at the right time yeah this can be an absolute deal breaker and yeah, a very insane. nifty item for someone who wants an extra weapon in their Wait, arsenal. Manhandle, oh, i didn't i, dude, I forgot all about main handling weapons weapon means you can Shit. swap it out during combat no you're right added flexibility dude that rogue is then a we god. move on Holy to the Shit. annihilator recommended by mike bolman oh Hope yeah you name that correctly an item crafted by a blacksmith that's fucking insane this is an item that i've barely ever seen on Holy private Shit. servers and it's a shame because this is probably one of the best main handers to have for a tank that is currently off tanking a boss. Fuck being able yeah. to not just be a standby for the main tank, but as an added bonus, add three stacks of 200 That's reduced insane. armor on the boss. Now, as we know, rogues and well geared fury warriors can do a lot of damage. I and know. 600 reduced armor on a boss 
can definitely give their DPS a bump and perhaps even make or break a fight. All that is possible with the Annihilator, and while the price for all the mats is admittedly quite steep, it is still an underrated item if you ask me. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Next item That's I want amazing. to talk about is the Crescent Staff, an item what? that you get from a quest called Leaders of the Fang. Now I know what you're probably thinking, underrated? This? It's one of the most common blues you would get as a caster. Well, yeah. Well, here's why it's better, even though it takes up a debut slot. is because, alright, imagine this. Imagine I'm a Fury Warrior. Now, my debuff slot could be taken up by a Warlock, Curse of Affliction, or some other stupid shit like that. Or another buff that helps me. <laughs> Come on. Fuck them. Yeah, you're right. For yeah, a caster. A staff. However, this item is also great for warriors. Wait, what? But it has intellect and spirit. Well, yes, but let me explain. It's really you good. You see, in the he, early he's, stages he's of right. leveling a warrior on the horde side, you yep. don't exactly get any really good two-handed weapons. Yep. Sure, you can go to the auction house or hope for a really good random world drop. Yep. But what if you can't rely on either of those two situations? Well, then look no further, warriors. This is your go-to weapon in your late teens and early 20s. Because while the stats are kind of terrible, the stats are insane. The damage is really good. We'll, we'll get those. We'll get, Trust we'll get me, those I've damage. tried this out on my own server, and even with crappy gear, this I was able insane. to mow down mobs at a very respectable pace. It's nothing. I know that wearing a staff as a warrior is kind of weird, but things like sword or axe specialization are talents that come into play much later when you're past level 30. So yeah, get this as a warrior if you're going to level up as a two-handed. I got the Westfall staff. You're so, gonna love yeah. it. Yeah. Up next is the Green Whelp Armor, oh, also we recommended saw this. by Mike Bowman, and crafted by Yeah, this is really good. This item is absolutely wonderful if you're leveling in a zone where there's a lot of PvP going on, like Stranglethorn Vale, because every melee attack has a 5% chance to put the target to sleep for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is enough for a melee to bandage up, or for a druid to heal up, gain distance, and root the enemy. That is so really good. So this can be a deal breaker, and completely ruin an opener for Let's say a rogue who's trying to gank you with cheap shot, then kill you. It's a 5% chance. If he gets put right? to sleep. His combo is ruined, and you have a good chance to counter him. Also, it's not that expensive. 5% is create, insane. So when I'm leveling my Orc Hunter on Classic, you can rest assured knowing that I will have this ready to go well, if fuck, I'm going yeah, to a hotbed for gankers. Up That's next really is the good. Warmonger, recommended by Metagoblin, and it's a world drop. So this item has a warrior slash paladin feel to it. Uh, it's a sword with a 3.0 attack speed, which is not the best. I don't know about three this, strength man. and three percent hit, which makes this item great for hunters in early end game. Wait, hunters? Oh yeah, despite this thing having that three strength on it, it's still an amazing item for hunters who are going to raid and need to stock up on extra hit chance. Because the 3% hit alone makes this item worth getting if you can get it off the auction house for a decent price. Holy shit. I know it might look a little weird, but I've seen hunter after hunter wear this as their very first raiding weapon, so to say, because there are very little weapons in the game that offer you this much extra hit chance. That's a really and good point. As we point. all know, hit chance is the uh, first is stat you should focus on if you're a DPS and want to start raiding. Wow. Next item I want to feature in this video is the horned viking helmet that drops off of Eric the Swift in Alderman. And it was recommended by LifeBro. I'm thinking about probably getting this. Uh, I'm not sure if I will or not, but I might. Uh, charge an enemy, knock it silly for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. That's fucking ridiculous. It's a Wait, it's Horde only. Level 40 plate item with agility and stamina. But more importantly, it does exactly the same thing that the Goblin Rocket Helmet does. Though this has a 30 minute cooldown compared to the Rocket Helmet's 20 minutes. Rocket helmet's better. But still, a non-engineering item that makes the target incapacitated for 30 seconds? Holy shit. That's a dream item for anyone who's heavy on the PvP and has big enough balls to take on a 2v1. So it's another item definitely worth keeping in the back God, of your head. Yeah, that's should really you want good. to have some extra utility in your PvP wow. activities. What the fuck? Up man? next is the black duskwood staff. A staff with no caster stats and a chance on hit for melees. Yeah, this staff has always been an odd duckling, and because of those stats, no one really saw any value in it, and thus it always ended up on the auction house for next to no money. Yeah. However, as I've just explained with the Crescent Staff, wearing a staff as a melee DPS oh, no. isn't necessarily a really bad thing, oh, no. and the same goes for this item. 
Now this is a level 33 item, so any warrior should have their whirlwind axe by now and have something like axe or sword specialization not depending have on the item. Who's gonna do that 33? However, for enhancement shamans, this item isn't half bad. It has a oh fast attack God. speed and no real stats, but because you can pick these up for dirt cheap and because the DPS is still not too shabby, you can actually do a fair amount of damage with this thing and use this for leveling and even some PvP. <sighs> Sure, you might look a little funny as an enhancement class. shaman wearing a staff, but you'll have the last laugh when you mow someone down with a wind fury crit Holy using this shit, item. Man. Now it's time to talk about the Phantom Blade, recommended by Fishfood159. Decreases the armor of the target by 100 for 20 seconds. Oh, this is like the Dazzling Longsword! A very cool looking item, but also a very handy chance on hit, because it decreases the armor of the target by what 100 for fuck? 20 seconds, but more importantly, they cannot stealth or turn invisible during these 20 That's seconds. That's insane. Which makes this a great counter weapon for when you're fighting a rogue who mid-fight wants to vanish and open up on you again. Fuck them. Because now they can't anymore. That's smart. That and it has a decent 2.6 attack speed and the damage itself is pretty good too. The only problem is that it's rather expensive to make, but despite that oh, I'd say yeah. it's still a pretty remember, yeah, underrated item a ton of because shit. of I made that this chance in, in on Legion. Hit. Time to talk about something a little different. Okay. The Crystal of Zin Malor, recommended by Moonsty. This item is part of an Alliance quest, and if you never handed that quest, you can have this item for as long as you'd please. So, what does it do? Well, as you can see, it deals damage and drains 100 to 501 this mana every seconds if you are not worthy. It also takes away health, so equipping this will make you kill yourself. But wait, how on earth is that useful? To break well, CC? here's the thing. If you die by this item, and not by, let's say, a raid boss because your raid is wiping, you get no durability loss. And no durability loss means no repair bill, okay. which in the end will save you lots of money if you have this with you for a raid. So that's why, in my humble opinion, this item is underrated. It's a great that way to cure yourself damage, without suffering man. any durability loss. Holy shit! Next item is an item you don't wear, that's but smart. a separate usable item. The Clutch of Foresight, recommended by Fishfood159. This item drops off of Maleki the Pallet in Stratholm. What this does is basically the same thing as a Mage's Counterspell. It counters the enemy spell cast, preventing any spell from that school of magic being cast for 10 seconds. Can you... Is this reusable? So like you just have this and you can use it whenever you want? Or is it like you use it once and it's gone? One charge, okay. Fuck. Oh, and it's unique, so you can't farm them out. That oh, and it also generates a high amount of threat. Wow. Unfortunately, when you use the item, it's gone, and you can only carry one at a time. Okay. But despite this, I'd still say it's a pretty sick item to hold on to if you're running Stratholme and this drops. Yeah, it's insane. Imagine being a mage, having this in your bag, finding another player that wants to kill you, and right after he thinks you use your counterspell, you pull this out and catch him by surprise with a double counterspell. That, and because it generates a high amount of threat, you could also hold on to this if you're a tank and looking for some extra threat on a particular That's target. True. That's all in all, true. not a mind-blowing item, but something that can definitely throw people off if you use this in PvP. That's a big true. Up next is the Jagged Obsidian Shield, which on its own is a half-decent item, but that 3 second silence is definitely not something Purple to spell. ignore. Fire Elemental Shamans cast. are probably the ones that can benefit the most from this, as oh. they always prefer to roll around with a main hand and a shield. Oh, and yeah! And since they can decimate their opponent in just a few seconds with the amount of burst damage they wow, can do, what the fuck? a small window of three seconds where the other target is yeah, silenced guys, I'm the wrong could be class. enough to make or break a fight. Especially because a Chain Lightning what plus Earthshot combo takes only 1.5 seconds to cast, and with a little luck can deal well over 2,000 damage. God damn! This is crazy. Next item I want to talk about is the Shatterer, recommended by AJ9 Lives. Oh yeah! And is an item crafted by blacksmiths. We were it actually looking at this the other day. has a chance to the target for 10 yeah, this seconds. This is insane. 10 seconds is a huge time window. So it's let's like say you're battling disarm. a warrior with a big two-hander. He can now do next to no damage in a 10 second time window, which again... I don't think this is really that useful because anybody that you're really PvPing against seriously is going to have a weapon chain on their weapon or some sort of way for them to not get disarmed. Like, this is a low level meta weapon, but I can't see it happening at like high level a whole lot. Right? You have chain to anti disarm? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so I'm not really sure how useful this is really going to be. Can be a huge opportunity for you to turn the fight and come out victorious. Right. 
And because it's a weapon, you can once again swap this out during combat. Oh yeah, PvE. So oh, you can right react about that. instantly when getting charged by a warrior and try to turn the tide with this item. So I want to say one thing. Like one thing I really like about classic, like playing a warrior tank, is that I can use these different weapons to add different utility to my group. So like let's say I'm off tanking. If I'm off tanking, I can fucking swip, uh, swip. I can swip on swatch and swip on. Wait. I I, I can equip. Uh, I can equip Nightfall, and I can apply a debuff to the boss that makes him take more magic damage. Or, I can use this axe. And I think all of the different ways that I can kind of use these special, unique items to, uh, like, help the group, it makes me feel like I'm more of a... It, like, makes me feel like I'm more part of it, right? And I think that's so fucking badass. I, I like it a lot. And then we get to the Windweaver Staff. A staff with stamina, intellect, and arcane Not damage. Not another one. So, on paper, this doesn't no. look like a great staff. No. Warlocks and priests don't rely on arcane damage, and mages don't use arcane no. missiles that often. So, what's the purpose of the staff? Well, balance druids. If you're one of those druids that wants to actually try and level as a balanced druid, here's your staff. This thing is amazing for its level, and with a few well-selected items means you can deal nasty Starfriar crits at an early level and completely catch people by surprise. It is a random world drop, so you do have to hope that either you get it yourself, or that it's on the auction house for a decent price. Who levels this balance? Then we have Mira Song, oh, recommended by Bob Plays Games, which you can get through a quest chain that involves you going to Skullamance. I was about so, to say, what's that's so great really about this good. Item? It doesn't have some weird chance on hit. The stats it's a aren't fast anything sword. to write home about. Why is this here? It's a super fast sword. Well, first off, this item is fairly unknown to the general classic public. Okay. Throughout my years and years of playing on retail vanilla and vanilla private servers, I've barely ever seen any rogue with this, and while I admit that there might be better offhanders out there, this one is still worth considering. First up, it's a sword, not a dagger. So if you're going combat sword spec, that means two weapons that can benefit from sword specialization. Right. Next, it has a pretty fast attack speed. Great for applying poisons to the target. True. So, while this doesn't do anything super special, it's still a solid weapon that not a whole lot of people know of, which makes this item pretty underrated if you ask me. God damn. Next item is Serenity, recommended by Bob Plays Games. That's so yeah, OP, I know, dude. the guy was on fire with the recommendations. Yeah, dude, this anyway, Bob this guy knows how to play the game. This is a pretty nifty chance on hit. Holy it shit. It a magic effect on the current foe. Now against some classes, this might not do a whole lot. Like, maybe take away a Druid's Mark of the Wild buff. How Yo, I should actually use this whenever I'm dueling these fucking priests, man. And, and like, whenever they just keep using these fucking shields over and over, I just put this hammer on them and I just beat the fucking shields right off of them. It's amazing. No, think about that. That's actually so good. However, it can be quite nasty against the Paladin who just popped their Blessing of Protection or Hand of Freedom. And then this item takes it away. I don't know it about is that. quite situational. I think pretty situation like to that, it. it can really turn a one v one into your favor. And for that reason, I decided to put this on the list. Next item I want to talk about isn't really an item; it's a whole set, which is the Iron Weave set, recommended by Gordon this? Tang. Now, at first glance, this set seems terrible for shit? casters. They have no spell damage, no spell hit, crit, okay. or whatever. What they do have, however is a lot of armor. On a Warlock with a simple scroll of protection and a Mark of the Wild buff, I managed to get somewhere around 35-40% to 40 damage reduction. You get 10% chance to resist silence and interrupt effects, which combined with Soul Link means you're probably going to be able to take a huge beating and completely throw off a warrior, as he's probably thinking, why the hell am I hitting this clothy for so little? This Warrior's never gonna think that, okay? Because they do so much damage. You're just gonna die. Like the warrior's not gonna think it. Well, warriors don't think about anything anyway. They're just gonna go in there and kill you, right? It, it doesn't matter. And I, I don't know about that. I don't know how useful this is really gonna be because it feels like if you're losing, if you use this, you're losing your damage at the same time. Uh, sack fear and bandage. You just berserk a rage out of it and interrupt the fucking bandage. Like trust me. Like once warriors get up to sixty, it's gonna be over. Like, I, I just, I literally, like, I'll do so much damage, they're just gonna die. It doesn't make any sense. Of course, for this no, to really have we'll a huge effect, you're going to have to get we'll at see. least the majority of the set, 
which can take a lot of time. But yeah. it's definitely something to keep in the back of your head when running dungeons and in some situations can help you out a lot. Like fighting a rogue thinking he can take away a huge chunk of your health with his initial stun lock. And because of that, I decided to throw this onto the list oh, as well. Oh, I hate that fucking thing, dude. It's so Next annoying. Next item on this list is the Demon Slayer. Another item that usually ends up on the auction house pretty cheap. Mainly because it only has increased attack power against demons. That's pretty good. However, 99? to a hunter, this item could be very useful for when you're fighting demons or your guild goes out to, let's say, kill Lord Kazak. Oh my god, I mean, dude. think about it. 99 extra attack power is more than some really good epics give like Ash Candy. And wow. considering how this That's, is a yeah. level 52 blue item that isn't all that expensive to get, I'd say for the right situations, this is a very nifty and underrated what item. What the fuck? And the last item I want to talk about is the Wildthorn Mail, an item crafted by Blacksmith. Nature damage. Now, in my years of playing vanilla oh, and retail, for and my years of playing on vanilla private servers, I have barely ever seen someone craft this, let alone wear this, mainly because it is admittedly rather expensive to make. But the stats are pretty insane for elemental shamans. Okay. I mean, think about it. Is there any other chest out there that offers you that much spell damage at such an early level? Hell, even the Zandalar Shaman chest, the go-to chest for elemental shamans, which you get much later down the line, okay. has the same amount of spell damage. I mean, sure, that's spell damage, okay. and this is nature damage, but since elemental shamans rely mostly on nature damage, that particular difference is pretty small. And the cool thing is, if you combine this with the Elven Spirit Claws, a leather BOE item that yeah, usually isn't you do too more expensive damage. off that's the crazy. you will have a whopping 55 bonus nature damage from just two items that you could have before even reaching level 50. So, while this item is expensive to make, I'd say it's definitely still worth it. And because it's fairly unknown, I'd say that this is definitely an underrated item. And there you go guys, 20 items okay. that I feel are underrated in Classic WoW. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back very soon, but until then, I'm Hamster This Wheel, was a good video. Have a good one. This was actually a very good video, I like this video a lot. Uh, I wish they did more like this. Uh, I, I love this kind of shit. I don't know what the hell that music is. I, I that, that probably should change that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I, I really liked, especially the first choices, like the staff and everything. Like, I don't know, things like this that are like really kind of outside of the meta, right? Like the warmonger, you use this if you're a hunter because it helps you in that way. And, and like the phantom blade, like it makes you feel like you're kind of, I don't know, it just makes the game feel a lot bigger. I don't know, it just feels much bigger whenever that's the case. And so, like, I, I wish Blizzard would, uh, would realize that and do more things like that, man. 3% hit, yeah, it's fucking insane. Differentiate classic when it was actually classic, and 14, it's a private service. Oh, yeah, I mean, everybody knows a lot more about the game now. That's definitely true. Uh, I don't know, it just makes the game feel a lot bigger than it used to be. I think that's really what makes it so cool. Like, the magic effect on foe, like, all of these different maces, and, like, especially, as I said, like, if I'm a warrior and I'm tanking, like, as, let's say I'm, like, offhand tanking, or off tanking, right? If I'm able to use something like, uh, I don't know, like that, or, like, the other axe, right? Like, where's the axe he was using? Uh, Annihilator, right? I'm applying Annihilator. That's 600 less armor the boss is going to have just because I'm fighting him. And I think that shit is so fucking badass. And it makes me feel like that's like the little the little way that I can change what I do in the raid to be more dynamic with what I'm actually trying to accomplish as, as a part of the raid, right? It's where I actually feel like I'm part of it. And I think that's really fucking cool. I love it. Oh, I know why the servers just went down. Uh, they just added the Field of Strife. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. And they put seven characters on there for me, too. That's great. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, 16 debuff slots. Well, 600 armor is... I, I think that 600 armor is pretty much worth a debuff slot. Probably more than, like, a Warlock's Dot or something like that. I mean, especially if you're running, like, a melee-heavy comp. I would assume so. Uh, Annihilator doesn't stack with Sunder. Oh, it doesn't stack with Sunder? Okay, then it's garbage. Um, okay, never mind. Yeah, then, then it's garbage. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one, I do really like this one, too. Yeah, it does. Okay, well, who cares? If it does if it does stack with Sunder, then it's great. If it doesn't stack with Sunder, then it's not great. Rage. Go back and, and read the comment. Wait, what's the comment from this? Just a second. Big thanks to everyone. Oh, these are just all the comments here. Yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, I mean, here before Asmongold reacts to this.
the way it goes, dude. All good guilds run Annihilator. I wouldn't call it underrated. Oh, yeah, my bad. Hi, Asmon Bald. Love you, Papa. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead. We'll look at the uh, next video. I got it. They're getting smarter. Every WoW video, ju it, it, they're just all the comments are about me. I think it's great. 